This is the Hypothesis Roadmap session, and I'm Franny from the marketing team at Hypothesis, and my wonderful colleague Jeremy is here, and Jeremy's going to be leading this session just to talk about Hypothesis, uh, where we've been, where we're going, that sort of thing. With that, I'll shut up and turn it over to Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, excited to be here. A uh, big shout out to Franny and to Nate uh, for the wonderful work they've done all week um, and pulling off this very engaging uh, remote uh, conference that we've uh, all been party to. Um, and thanks so much to all the speakers. I haven't been able to go to every section a session, but um, there's been some really truly inspiring stuff. Um, this is a session, short session, on talking about the hypothesis roadmap, where we've been uh, and where we're going. Um, and I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so it's been two years since we've done one of these. We did not have a conference last year, not even a remote one. Um, so the last time that we had a, an I annotate was uh, in 2019. Uh, and a lot has happened uh, since then. Obviously, we've been hard at work. Um, but there's also been a, a real, I think, shift or a deepening of focus at Hypothesis in terms of really, uh, the, the headline is that we really start to focus on, anno on, on annotation in the education space uh, over the past two years. Um, it's true that since, uh, since the beginning, uh, educators have used Hypothesis in the classroom. Um, and since 2015, we've had a dedicated director of education building out uh, that vertical. But, it, but it's really only in the past two years that the full force, the full focus of the company has been on education, including uh, the engineering uh, and product uh, development resources. Um, so this is our threefold, uh, you know, vision for hypothesis and education. Um, the first claim here should should resonate with anybody who's used the tool inside or outside the classroom that uh, social annotation is a way to uh, more deeply engage with content that you are reading um, and with others who are, are reading the same content. Um, but some of the other propositions for for educators, why this matters to teachers, and why this matters to institutions of education, might be newer to folks who are using Hypothesis outside of, of that space. Uh, we've learned uh, over the past couple of years um, from educators that we've worked with that um, there's some radically new things about Hypothesis social, uh, social annotation. One of those is the visibility uh, that social annotation provides to educators uh, to learn more about where their students are at uh, with their reading and understanding of course materials. Um, but we also believe in we're learning from some of our bigger institutional partners. Uh, we have schools that are really using hypothesis at scale with enterprise agreements. We're learning that administrators uh, outside of the classroom also gain a lot of insights uh, around uh, teaching and learning uh, from the data that's produced by social annotation. And namely, they can see very early on if students are engaging in a course, because of course, one of the first things a student will do for a course is read. And this tool allows uh, teachers and administrators to see that students have done the reading, uh, to see if they're engaged, um, and possibly to intervene uh, when they're not, um, and use social annotation as a way to more deeply engage students and, and keep them enrolled. So the major gateway uh, into the education space, um, for those that are unfamiliar with it, uh, is the learning management system. Uh, and it was really just before our last in-person meeting of Annotate in 2019 that we launched our uh, integration with learning management systems uh, through the uh, learning technology interoperability standard uh, stored by, by IMS. Um, for those that have been using Hypothesis in the wild, uh, in, outside of a learning management system, uh, basically this integration allows for teachers and students uh, to use the app without signing up for accounts, um, without installing a browser extension, so it makes experience much more seamless uh, for them. Um, and uh, usable at a kind of scale where if you have 120 students in a semester, you really can't chase them down and make sure they've signed up for something and installed a browser extension, updated the browser extension, uh, et cetera. Um, but the story of the last two years has really been about the extending and deepening of our integration with the LMS. Uh, we enable instructors to store uh, documents for annotation in Google Drive. Um, that was one of the first things we added to the app. Uh, we also integrate with Canvas SpeedGrader as well as the grade books um, in other LMSs. This allows teachers to grade annotation sets by students. Um, we've integrated with the Canvas uh, file system so that PDFs and other documents can be stored there. Uh, we introduced the Canvas sections integration, allowing for smaller group annotation. Uh, you might have a course of 100 students, 
but uh, you're reading a short poem and you really just want 10 students on each on that poem annotating together, um, you can now divide that uh, group, it, that larger course roster into smaller sections as you, you know, would expect to see with in a, in a university structure of a course. Um, instructors can copy courses year to year or semester to semester so that the same content and the same sort of assignments with hypothesis are um, are there from the previous semester if they're teaching the same course. Some of this stuff is a little wonky. We work with scoped dev keys in Canvas, which is basically just a way to limit the power that Hypothesis has um, or that the data that Hypothesis has access to within the LMS. Um, why that's important is that one of the things that Hypothesis has stayed true to over its years, um, you know, starting in open source, uh, is that we're really limited in the data that we gather um, from our users, from students, and from institutions. We really try to tread carefully there. Um, and the scope dev keys is just a way that, you know, schools can say, all right, Hypothesis is ac access to this and, and not other stuff. Um, certainly one of the other big headlines uh, that over the past couple of years is um, our adherence to uh, WCAG 2.0 AA compliance. Um, thanks to Nate um, and to Caitlin and now to Matt uh, and others at Hypothesis, the dedication to accessibility at Hypothesis is really goes well beyond the box ticking of, um, of compliance with WCAG standards. Um, we have met that compliance, but we also continue to work very closely with institutions and with individuals around where things aren't working as well as they could um, and just making the tool universally uh, accessible to, to all, um, regardless of whether that's a, you know, a, a, a criteria of standards or just the lived experience of, of the user. Um, we have IMS uh, LTI 1.1 certification, which is about to expire. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, just in the past few months, we re released an activity views feature uh, for the LMS. Those have, that have moved in between the LMS and the uh, wild app, as I call it, um, will notice there's sometimes differences, some capabilities that are uh, outside of the LMS that aren't possible in the LMS yet. And so we're slowly bringing uh, parity to the LMS app. And now we have an acti activity views space called Notebook um, in the LMS app. Um, and then one neat thing that's happened sort of outside of the normal development cycle, thanks to John Udell, uh, is some early experimentation in ad administrator and instructor dashboards. Anybody that's working within the LMS who hasn't seen this teacher or um, or administrator, I highly recommend getting in touch. They are a prototype, so they are behind um, some authentication that we need to work with you to gain access to. But this is the early exploration of how annotation data can be surfaced to students, instructors, and administrators um, in, in a very powerful way. And this is not a very powerful slide, um, but this is what the dashboards look like at the top level. Um, and you can just see that John, very much in partnership with users. John is talking to administrators and to uh, instructors about, well, what do you want to see? What's interesting about the basic activity that's being done um, by your students with annotation, by you and your students with annotation? And he started to surface some of those uh, data points. So you can see here, you know, there's going to be some raw top level numbers. How many annotations has so and so made? How many annotations per day? Uh, how many annotations on a document? But also some really, you know, deep, interesting dives into things like conversationality, right? How healthy is the conversation in the course, right? Um, how often are tags being used? Uh, different annotation types, private annotations, uh, replies, top level annotations. How often are images or video used in annotations? Um, you can see here he has a section on confusion, surprise, and lack of understanding. A lot of uh, data points around questions and how many questions are asked, and how many, uh, how often are those answered, and by whom are they asked, and who is answer given by? We can see things like the teacher is really answering a lot of student questions, so we can see teacher presence in the data. We can also see peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connection through ways that students are responding uh, to each other. This is very valuable in terms of our conversation with partners about, well, why is the tool valuable? How are we seeing it being used? So shout out to John for that. Shout out, I think it is actually, sorry. Um, I'm excited to be able to announce publicly, I think for the first time, two brand new releases, um, two of the biggest um, requests. Certainly Canvas Groups is one of the biggest requests, this idea that um, 
you want students to be annotating in smaller groups, and one mechanism in Canvas is their, you know, capital G groups functionality. So our inter, our inter um, our uh, integration with Canvas groups is something brand new. Many don't know about that. I don't think it's been said publicly. Um, and the other one is, is Blackboard files, the ability to host content within Blackboard um, rather than uh, in Google or other places or on the web. Um, so if you're from a Blackboard institution or a Canvas institution, we will be reaching out next week. But please do, um, do reach out to us and, and let us know. Uh, uh, we can get you started you know, as soon as possible. Uh, this is what the Canvas Groups feature looks like. Um, it just allows you, as a, this would be an instructor's view of a document that was being read and annotated by different um, smaller cohorts within a larger course roster. And the instructor would be able to go in and see Group 1's annotations and then switch to see Group 2's annotations and also be grading those individuals within those groups. Um, and of course, if you're an individual student, you would just see the groups to which you are uh, assigned. So. Um, that's very exciting. I think it's going to make a big difference in terms of hypothesis working with larger courses, um, 200, 300 person courses that, you know, you can't have 200, um, you know, physics students all reading a 10 page paper. You're going to want to break that down. And then the Blackboard files feature. We're also going to be, as you'll see in a second, bringing out the native, he's working with the native files um, uh, repositories for other LMSs like Sakai. Uh, and D2L and Moodle, but Blackboard is what we've got. Um, there are some things we can do through LTI and bring it to all um, LMSs. That's the standard that is used for these uh, external tools like Hypothesis. And there are some things where we have to go in and work on the API. And so uh, kudos to the de development team at Hypothesis for all their work figuring out not only the ins and outs of the LTI standard, but also the ins and outs of APIs uh, for all the different LMSs. Um, I'm sure they're all experts by now. Uh, so what is coming? Um, we, like I said, just released these features and now we're focusing on a OneDrive integration. We see many schools that are Google schools and we have a Google Files integration, Google Drive integration, but we have a lot of Microsoft schools and so we're gonna be rolling out a OneDrive integration um, so that you can have uh, uh, store files, uh, PDFs specifically within you know, the, the institutional OneDrive. Um, we're also going to bring groups to Blackboard. So this is the Canvas equivalent. You know, we have Canvas groups, which was done through API, not through LTI. Um, and I know that sounds wonky for those that don't care about those, uh, you know, acronyms. But um, we're going to bring that small group capability to the other LMSs, and we're going to be starting with Blackboard. Um, we're also, as I said, going to bring file storage uh, in other LMSs besides Canvas and Blackboard. Uh, we have course copy. Uh, to bring to some of the other LMSs. Um, really one of the most exciting things for the next few months is an integration with VitalSource, which I'll be talking about a little more in a second. Um, but VitalSource is a content delivery platform. They work with Barnes & Noble to deliver a lot of content to uh, you know, bookstores. So University of Texas bookstore, if a, if a teacher adopts a, uh, a text and has students buy it at the uh, UT bookstore um, and they buy it digitally, it's going to be delivered through VitalSource. And so we have a partnership uh, uh, work uh, launching with them this fall. So if you're a vital source school, or you're even just an individual instructor who likes the vital source delivery mechanism and wants to assign a, 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 a text that would be bought through vital source, um, you can uh, you know get in touch about that integration. Um, we're going to be launching AWS hosting. Uh, in, uh, sorry, AWS hosting outside the U.S. starting with Canada. So we hope to have uh, you know Canadian data center. Um, up and uh, up and running. Not up, I mean, it's already up and running, but we hope to be integrating with um, AWS Canada uh, by the end of the summer, so we can uh, expand within the Canadian um, Canadian provinces. Many of whom are very concerned, rightfully so, about privacy um, and where data is stored and in what country it is stored. Uh, their southern neighbors haven't always had the most stable, uh, you know, people in charge. So I can understand them not wanting to host uh, their student data. Um, LTI 1.3 Im implementation uh, is coming as well. Um, and uh, we're going to continue with our accessibility uh, improvements. Again, we really do listen very closely to partners. And we learn, hey, this isn't working with a specific screen reader. And so we create a ticket and then really try to address those specific rubs um, that, again, are outside of the compliance regime of uh, WCAG AA or uh, uh, compliance, um, but are nonetheless uh, 
you know, difficult aspects of using our tool with certain readers in certain contexts. And so we're um, going to address those um, as we go. And I should have said earlier that the accessibility, you know, philosophy has really been written into the way that we develop now. And so that everything that we develop, every new feature is going through a protocol around um, making sure that it's accessible. So we had a lot of retroactive work to do, and now it's just a piece of, of what we do every time we release a feature and design a feature. Uh, we also have video annotation coming, a video transcript annotation coming uh, in the next few months as well. Longer term, we have uh, in-app notifications. Notifications is a big ask of our users. Um, for me, this is really important because um, you want students to go back to the reading, right? That's a big part of, of reading and understanding. I'm beginning to think critically about material in a college or high school classroom. You want them returning to the text. And a great mechanism for doing that is, oh, my teacher responded to one of my annotations or my classmate responded to one of my annotations. Uh, if you've ever gotten a push notification from your social media platform of choice, you know, it makes you go back, right? Uh, somebody liked my tweet, I'm gonna now open up Twitter. Um, one-to-one -one annotations uh, is something we want to deliver. Um, this is the idea that uh, while Hypothesis originated as a kind of collaborative tool um, or a, a broadly collaborative tool and a tool that was built around conversation, there are times, pedagogically speaking, when instructors want to know, you know, did Jesse, I'm going to pick on Jesse in the audience, you know, did Jesse read the Shakespeare poem uh, correctly, right? Or, you know, I want to see how she interpreted the, the um, Shakespeare poem without the influence of Chris or Franny or Morgan or others. Um, it's, a, it's a valuable uh, use case. We see it especially in the secondary uh, uh, level of education. Um, and so we want to create a mechanism where we can do that. It's possible we may be able to leverage some of the group's work that we're doing. But in the case, it's a use case we want to develop for. Um, I've mentioned secondary education. We want to expand within the secondary marketplace. Um, we are already working with a number of secondary institutions. One of the most meme secondary institutions uh, in the world, probably, Choate Rosemary Hall, is represented by Morgan in the chat here. Shout out to Morgan and, and Choate. Um, and so we see it being used there. Uh, we often see it being used in schools like Choate that use a, a, a sort of uh, LMS uh, that is more, um, that is common to the uh, tertiary market, to the post-secondary market. Um, like, like Canvas, right, that has a big uh, presence in higher education. I believe Chode is on Canvas. Um, but we need to get Google Classroom uh, integration going for all those secondary institutions that are using, um, you know, Google Classroom. And so that's something that we're already starting to, to think about um, and research around. Um, student ownership of hypothesis accounts and content beyond the LMS. You know, anybody that knows the history of this company, we're not just an ed tech tool. Um, and we don't believe annotation is just sort of a, an institutional tool for uh, administrators and teachers. Ultimately, it's something that is healthy for students and it's healthy for everyday people on the internet. Um, and they should have ownership of their content and they should be able to take that tool with them uh, wherever they go, not just within a particular platform that they're using in a particular educational context. And so the hope is that students at Choate um, would be able to take their annotations with them uh, when they graduate and then they go to the University of Massachusetts or where they make, uh, you know, and the University of Massachusetts would be a, a place where they could then continue to use um, Hypothesis and continue to have access to uh, the annotations they've created with Hypothesis um, beyond a particular institution's um, you know, uh, platform. Uh, caliperization will be part of our uh, you know, building out of the data structures around annotation, uh, according to, uh, uh, you know, more standard formats. A lot of institutions are, uh, ins educational institutions are capturing data from various learning tools like Hypothesis through standards like Caliper, and then doing neat things where they align them and then learn more about their students. Uh, so we want to be able to uh, contribute to that project um, through the caliperization of our data and a partnership with Unison that we're hoping to launch. And they're, uh, you know, one of the leaders in thinking through um, data across platforms and tools and how it can be meaningful um, and uh, actionable for, uh, for institutions and for teachers and for students. Single sign-on beyond just the LMS. So in WordPress and Pressbooks and uh, in the domain of one owns, domains of one, domain of one's own, um, you know, uh, platforms, um, and then unifying single sign-on across contexts so that my, um, my, you know, I can log into Canvas and use Hypothesis, and then when I switch to a WordPress site that my teacher is using, 
uh, hypothesis recognizes me um, as the same person, allows me uh, to see my annotations in, in those both those places and use the same account seamlessly across those different platforms. Um, and then finally, and I think most importantly, um, the, a file picker functionality for publisher resources. And this is really not a great articulation of, of the problem. I think the biggest problem, not the biggest problem, but the biggest opportunity ahead of us is that Hypothesis is an awesome tool. And every day our engineers and our, our product folks are making it awesomer um, for students uh, and, and for teachers. And the big question is, I wanna use this on other types of content. I wanna use this in other places. Um, and it's expanding that landscape of content by working with folks like Vital Source and Barnes and Noble, by working with folks like JSTOR, um, through the Slack coalition, which uh, Dan has mentioned, that's just gonna you know, increase the real estate of content that students and teachers can access and use annotation on top of. By far the most important opportunity ahead of us is expanding the different types of texts in different places that um, students and teachers can access using the tool. And um, you can see here uh, some of the names of folks that we would like to partner with, um, the EBSCOs and ProQuest and JSTORs of the world, the Vital Sources and the Red Shelves, the Send Gages and the Wileys. Um, we're going we're gonna to need to be able to bring that content uh, to students uh, in the context of the LMS with uh, annotation capabilities, hypothesis annotation capabilities on, on top of it. Um, that is the, the major um, opportunity in front of us. And we're already with the, with, the, um, with the Vital Source partnership specifically and with the Slack coalition more broadly, um, we're, we're getting there um, to be able to bring more content to students and teachers with the power of annotation. Um, and this is what that is going to look like uh, for Vital Source this fall um, for a teacher creating an assignment, an annotation assignment within the context of the LMS. They will be able to um, not only select from some of these other resources, uh, resources on the web, resources in the native LMS file repository, resources in Google, resources in OneDrive, but also place, you know, Vital Source um, delivered content. And with that, I think I've reached my last slide with five minutes left. This may not be the most discursive of topics, but I'm certainly happy to answer questions. Um, if, uh, if, if folks have any, feel free to drop them in the chat or better yet in the Q&A. Maybe there was something you were hoping to see here. Well, what better time to ask for it directly? <laughs> Uh, so, Jeremy, here's a question from Jeremy. He's the other Jeremy who, every time I see it, his name, I think it's you, but it's not. It's another Jeremy. Um, and he asks, how healthy are conversations, RE, as in something like participant posting? Um, so, somebody, oh, how healthy? Sorry, somebody kind of addressed it in the chat a little bit, but... I thought I'd surface it. So, I mean, I guess the question might be, and feel free to raise your hand and, and speak up or, or re-articulate if I'm on the wrong track here. I mean, I guess the question is like, what is a healthy conversation? How is that determined? Um, we're not trying to define that for instructors, um, but we are exploring, you know, what does it mean for, for conversation to be healthy? Um, if that's a goal of yours, I always like to say, and it looks like Jeremy's on, on uh, appearing here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hey. Uh, hey, go ahead, Jeremy. You can go on camera now. Uh, I, I was actually annotate. So you actually, uh, you were looking at this. The context here was, and I commented, I replied to myself a little further <laughs> down. You're looking at the dashboard. Uh, and it had to do with, uh, you know, measure, the measurements, the easy to do measurements uh, in there. And you, you use the word healthy. Mm -hmm. So I was adding the context to that, by which I assume you met something around uh, the participant posting on a particular topic. And so, yeah. so in fact, I don't have a question. Okay. So much as uh, an answer to where I was uh, left wondering what you meant, because it wasn't immediately obvious to me that by healthy you meant the sort of metrics that could be uh, just passively read by the algorithm. True. Um, they're definitely... Uh deeper, you know, non-data centric ideas of health that uh, we're not going to try to. Why, that's why people have teachers. 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> because yeah. they're in relationship with him. Oh, a hundred percent. But I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, we're all sort of uh, machine human hybrids at this point. I think it can be helpful to know, oh, all my, all the annotations in my, in my course are only top level. Nobody's right. replying. So I maybe I'll bring that up in class. The design and pattern. Student asks, teacher answers, student asks, teacher answers, teacher asks, student answers. So do we have a, a student asks teachers? Hmm. So who's asking who? Okay, I, I've got more. <laughs> I've got more questions. Uh, John is talking not... about uh, helping in the chat there. Um, thank you for that, Jeremy. I think I'm we, we have time. We do have another question. I wish I did have a question. Go ahead. You said you have another question, Jeremy? No, Sorry. no, no. I'm out of questions. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll see you later. Thanks again. And Jeremy, I'm going to surface this on stage. This question, you can just read it. This is from the Q&A. See that? Yeah. Um, well, I think in terms of STEM classes, things like the vital source integration are going to be um, helpful because a lot of STEM classes are going to be using bigger textbooks that might be proprietary. They might be bigger courses. Um, so I think some of those basic functionalities will make it easier to use in um, some STEM classes. Um, I think uh, we want to also expand, and this isn't articulated in the in the slides I shared, the different types of things somebody could be putting into an annotation. So right now you can put in an uh, image, you can put in a video from YouTube, um, and you can put in a hyperlink. Um, and so I think um, one of the things that might uh, empower uh, use within STEM courses is adding to that repertoire of embeddable content that can go into an annotation. Um, and then I'd say the correlate, and so that's something we are looking into. We have H5P, for example, is something that we want to embed. Um, and we're working with other platforms that allow you know, for specific video embeds and things like that. Um, and then as somebody else asks, you know, image annotation in STEM classes, uh, absolutely, that's where I was going. There's sort of this other aspect, which is, um, what can I annotate? You know, right now, Hypothesis is very text heavy. It has to be addressable text. Um, and then being able to annotate the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the chart or the graph that's inside of a STEM article and, you know, circle or capture some piece of that image um, for annotation is definitely something that we're working towards image annotation broadly um, that I think will be helpful in, uh, in STEM courses as well. But Diego and uh, the other person was Brad, but also interested to know from you, you know, what, what do you, if you're a STEM instructor or educator, what, you know, what are the things you see besides textual annotation with text and, and the other things that would be um, helpful uh, from a, you know, science or math pedagogy or engineering pedagogy standpoint? Okay, so I, I magically popped another question onto the stage. Doesn't look like a question, but I'll try to turn it into one. Um, student ownership of hypothesis that uh, they can use parallel privately and have them bridge to note taking and tools for thought tools. I don't know if those are capitalized because those are um, specific projects that I'm not necessarily familiar with. Um, but uh, certainly, you know, the private annotations are part of what would be portable by a student. Uh, Hypothesis allows um, students to take private notes on top of course text and also have those group conversations. Um, and both of those are, you know, uh, those that are authored by an individual are, are sort of owned by that individual and, and uh, we want to make portable um, to other contexts. Will there be improved UI for more easy, easily storing, hosting, and annotating personal EPUB or other non-PDF uh, files. Um, so is the idea, is the question here, Chris, that you want uh, to be able to host your own um, annotations or to, to store annotations on your own personal servers? Um, I think that's something that's possible and we want to, rather than improve the UI, improve the documentation around um, so that it's easier for folks to do. Sorry, sorry. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. 
Yes. Uh, no. What I meant was that uh, uh, I say I use I, I use hypothesis very heavily, and it's 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 really the, the cornerstone of everything I do. So I suppose students want to be able to, may like to use it for their own work outside of school, and actually mm -hmm. have their own personal private copy, nothing to do with the institution, a kind of web native, you know, something that were, that lives on their on their machines. And in fact, if you do that, you could actually then then just take everything that that, that they want from their from their schoolwork as already being part of that. And that's that's right. what I'm saying. And uh, and also I'm in, involved in in people in this note taking space and network thinking tools. And with fishing and other web native tools, we really exploring uh, the possibility of really creating interoperability across note taking tools. So the future is yes. that we would like to reach is that uh, it doesn't matter what you, you know, bring your own note taking tool to your data instead of uh, you know going somewhere where there is there is some note taking capability. And I'm just saying that this is this is coming up, and I'm interested whether you would be interested or hypothesis would be interested to join this sort of uh, sort of web native movement, which basically means that what if you, if the only thing you need is a browser, so all your data is privately securely held on all your devices. And I really, my, my, my vision is to really bring hypothesis into this world and back so, so that it's a, it's a new level of, uh, of integration. And that really is the, could be the stepping stone to, to what Dan was talking about, which is, you any capability should be just one click away. So, so I, 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 I first of all, I want to ask you whether you understand what I'm talking about. Does it make sense? You know, any questions? Because I really, really believe in hypothesis and inspired by it. And this is the way I see that it could be really moved forward. That that's the way an answer to the question of future of note taking. With right. This. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I do. I think I understand what you're talking about. And I think Dan and the conversations around future of note taking at the conference, um, you know, show that we're very interested in that space. Um, you know, I focused really here on the sort of formal education context. Um, there's a lot of other work that we have done and that we want to do that falls outside of like how this works with an LMS and a partnership with a university. And this is, you know, this is in the DNA. This is the origin of hypothesis, what yes, you're talking I understand about. That. And at yeah. some point we want to bring them together, right? But I, but so I really this... like what you said that, that uh, oh, ensure that, uh, you know, you don't have to wait till the, the, the students graduate and leave. Right. You could actually yeah. make this sort of uh, private and, and institutional interoperability, really. That's the key, that, that, uh, that anything else that I do at school should be mine as well, you know, or by, yeah. by construction. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, and just just as a kind of way to maybe end, um, one of the neat things that you know under Dan's um, leadership and has has happened is that our contracts have actually pushed back against a lot of institutions um, that essentially demand that they are the owners yeah. of the work that the students do. Um, okay, and so it's kind of standard contractual language of universities and colleges and high schools sometimes to sort of say we own this stuff, and it's. It's a protection against it being owned by the company, right? Which is understandable, but we are sort of treading a kind of in-between space where we want to say, no institution, this isn't yours. A student wrote it, it's their intellectual property. They can do what they want with it. We also don't own it. <laughs> um, and so we're really trying to privilege the individual user. And it's been an interesting kind of legal question with many of our partners, because we will always want to keep that um, line in the sand, if you will, so that we can achieve what you're talking about um, you know, for students. Yes, but but I mean, the whole point of having a kind of web native sidecar that si sidesteps the issue because the other it would be the other way around. The student creates its contribution, his or her contribution, in his his or her space and makes it available to the institution. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I think to some the whole extent. Thing around. Yeah, I think to some extent that's you know when we get to we, look, we've had to. We focus on education. That's the use case that we're focused on. That's an area where we're gaining some sustainability. Um, that's just a fact. Um, and we want to do these other things. And when it comes down to, uh, you know, 
the starting with a learning management system integration that may be seemingly opposed to this web native movement. I think that's maybe misunderstanding the approach, which is yes. we're working in the marketplace of education. We're building something institutions could get behind, but we want to privilege the uh, ownership and the rights of the individual users and the students. And when it comes down, there's going to be some complications and, and questions about what that looks like, <laughs> how a student brings a hypothesis con uh, account and content into an institutional setting or how they take it out of an institutional setting. And, you know, our philosophy is that in all cases that should privilege the ownership of the, of the user uh, and the student, but there's a lot of work to be done uh, around that. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm just volunteering in that space. So, so if you yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, let's stay yeah, in touch yeah. and, and thank and you very it. much. Thank you very much. Thanks for your feedback. You yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. Uh, Michael is asking uh, about um, about a repository for hypothesis lesson plans and other resources that is coming. Uh, Franny and Nate. I don't think ever sleep and are working constantly on all the different things, including this wonderful conference. Um, and one of the top priorities is the launching of a liquid margins collection um, that will include uh, assignments, activities, all manner lesson plans, things like that, that will be a place where teachers can go. And my understanding is that we're 95% of the way there. Uh, and so I think that's coming very, very soon. I'm going to go ahead and just say that Nate and Franny are going to get that done in the next uh, six weeks. Oh, I, I, I started working on it last night. I'm halfway done already, but yeah, thanks. Uh, but yeah, it's coming. Well, stay tuned, Michael. I'm really excited about that too. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Um, let's go ahead and end that. And this here, thank you so much, Jeremy. And thanks everyone for your great questions. Jeremy, thank do you, you want to any parting words? Here Just, you know, Thanks for being here with us uh, for this session, and I look forward to seeing you in the other sessions. We have some more coming up this afternoon and tomorrow.